Hello and welcome to this Cali Fundamentals video. I'm very excited to be with you here today. We've been doing a lot of work and I'm sure you're asking yourself, when are we going to get started? When are we going to start working with the distribution? Well, the good news is, is we're going to get it introduced now. We're going to talk about um, basic navigation through the distribution and really this is where the rubber starts to meet the road in this lesson and in this course. So the objectives of this lesson is for you to walk away feeling comfortable and um, you know having a high level understanding of where some of the things are in uh, Kali Linux. Now this distribution may be a little bit different if you're using the labs that we pointed out earlier that you can use but I'll also do a quick tour of that environment as well so that you're on the same page as we're moving forward and working through these things together. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up my uh, session that I've got. This is a live boot. So as we discussed, this is not persistent between reboots. And so we're going to work through this together and talk about what we're looking at. So when you do a live boot, um, you don't log in using a username and password. It comes straight to the desktop here. And so uh, for those of you that want to do a full installation, just note that when you initially go to log in or do the installation, it will ask you to change the password. I recommend doing so and not using any defaults or any weak credentials with this distribution. Now, taking your attention to the left hand side here, we've got this bar and this bar has several applications on it. Uh, you know, top to bottom, we've got our web browser terminal, which we can use to enter some commands and do things of that nature. We've got File Explorer essentially here like we do in Windows. And then we've got some uh, security testing and pen testing tools. At the bottom we have LeapPad, which is essentially um, like a text document or a text pad that we can use um, in Linux. And we've also got Show Applications at the bottom. So this is much like the uh, application menu on a phone or a tablet or, or on um, an Apple device as well as in Windows. You've got the start menu where you can search for different applications. And this is pretty much everything that you've got in the distribution right now. So as you can see on the right hand side, we've got these little bubbles here. And as we scroll through, it just shows us that we're in that next section with respect to the applications that uh, we're looking at here. Now, if at any point in time you've got something you're looking for, like InMap or let's just say disk utilization, you can start to type that if you know what you're looking for. And oh, look, there's my disk utilization or disk uh, thing here. So I can click into that and it shows me my current home directory. And then I can click into the actual disk that I'm using and it starts to go to work and show me some things here. But that's not our focus for today. So that is a high level view of the bar here to the left. Now, in the top right hand corner, you've got what's kind of like a start menu would be to Windows and that you can drill into that and you've got some different settings and things you can do here. Uh, you've got the ability to log out and uh, reboot and power off uh, the current session. You can lock the screen with the lock button here. And then in the bottom left hand corner, we've got our settings button. So this uh, will pull up a menu that we've got here. So we've, we're in details right now and we've got users here, but if we back out, we'll notice that we've got a number of different settings and areas that we can go into. So if you plan on using the distribution day to day and you want to do some customization, we've got backgrounds, uh, notifications, uh, search region and language. So if you want to change the languages and the format of those, you can you know go in here and do uh, whatever is going to best suit you and your needs. Uh, we've got some universal access settings that we can use uh, here as well online accounts again if we're using the distribution day to day you can connect to some cloud accounts here of uh, privacy sharing sound etc uh, so if you're looking to check your sound card or figure out why well, something's not working you can do some research and look through some settings here power much like we do for windows when we want the screen to go blank or suspend etc we've got network settings which uh, we can drill down into and actually see our network settings and make some changes and do things of that nature. Um, and then devices, you know, input devices, um, display information, etc., that you can make changes to and manipulate. And then down here at the bottom, it kind of brings us back to uh, this user's date time area that we were in earlier. I do recommend if you're going to use the distribution for day to day tasks that you add a user to this that does not have. Um, 
root privileges. Right now running as the root account, if you make a mistake, accidentally delete a file that you don't mean to. If you're exploring the distribution and you make a mistake, uh, that could cause a lot of trouble for you. So I always recommend that you add a user that doesn't have administrative privilege and you use that user as you're exploring and looking through some things and learning the ropes. But of course, when you need to do some security testing and you're uh, you know, needing to use some of the tools and things of that nature, you're going to want to run as your administrative account in this case, which is root. Now, in the top left hand corner, we've got this applications drop down. It does a really nice job of laying everything out. Again, these are the favorites that you saw on the desktop earlier, so you'll notice that this actually matches the layout over here in the corner. And then as you go through this, it's essentially those tool categories that we talked about in previous lessons. You'll see that some tools or applications are in multiple areas, but essentially each of these categories is, you know, got some applications in it that'll help you to do things like post exploitation techniques or exploitation tools, reverse engineering, etc. And then at the bottom, you've got some usual applications, accessories, calculator, things of that nature, etc., that you can use and uh, mess with there. Now, that's essentially um, a very high level overview of some of the locations and things of that nature. Uh, the one thing I do want to mention is you do have that file explorer here, as well as places at the top, which is much like the um, component that you have under your, your user account in Windows, which gives you your desktop folder, documents, downloads, etc., and then computer, which will allow you to browse into some of the other directories. So this is your home directory here, which is essentially where your stuff lives, right? It's much like your user profile in Windows. Everything outside of this is very much system and applications and other things. So like we said, if you accidentally delete something here, you may have to reinstall the distribution. A tool may not work later. So just be cautious as you work through this. Now, this would be what you'd be looking at if you had just installed Kali or maybe this has changed since this distribution and now you've got something different you're looking at but those are the the kind of high level details there so let me go ahead and show you um, a lab environment that we had discussed earlier in our lessons as well so right now on Cybrary um, I'm looking at the host data integrity baselining lab so we're going to launch this real quick and what you'll see here is once this gets up and running there's actually a Kali virtual machine uh, that's in this lab environment and so if you're not looking to install everything and do all the work as far as like downloading the hypervisor Kali getting that running getting that going you can just log in and get started right away here so you'll note that the password for this is Tor uh, typically uh, with the Kali distribution you're going to do root as the username Tor as the password and instantly you'll see there's a few differences here we don't have the favorites bar um, you know the the icons look a little different but as you can see we still have system settings some of those other areas are now broken out a little bit more um, you know so really just get familiar with the distribution that you're going to enjoy using that's going to be the most beneficial to you uh, applications here a little different they've got a Kali directory that actually has those tools uh, broken down into the same categories we were looking at earlier so depending on the distribution that you're using, you're just going to want to get comfortable with it. As we get into the courseware, we're really going to be working out of the terminal here. And so you can follow along in any of the exercises that we'll be doing or lessons that we'll be doing with this lab environment uh, if you choose to use it as well. And so with those two things in mind, that is essentially what we're looking at with respect to getting comfortable with the distribution. You need to really, as I would say, bust your knuckles on it. You know, break a few things, get into a few things, check some things out. Don't do anything illegal, of course. Don't try to hack any IPs or do any fancy, you know, uh, tool utilization at this point in time. You know, just get to know the distribution, get to know where things are at, do some additional reading, and get to understand uh, what's really going to work for you and what you're going to enjoy seeing and how you want to have it laid out. Now, in summary, uh, you know, this lecture we took a brief, brief look into the kind of Kali desktop and how things were laid out. We looked at, of course, the version that we recently downloaded as well as the version that's available to you in your labs. And we got a feel for where things are at and, and what things do uh, at a very high level with respect to what's under settings and uh, what we have as far as applications and things of that nature. And so I want to thank you for your time today and I look forward to working with you uh, in the future.